All right, welcome back everybody to the NVIDIA Hearthstone program. Sorry about that little stream uh, configuration mishap. If you're watching on Twitch, we had to reset it, but thankfully everything seems to be looking good right now. So uh, we're going to get ready for our second match. As you saw that, we thought we were going to go with six overs dog, but it looks like we're having a little bit of a hard time reaching the players at the moment. So we're shift gears quickly into Pink Pink Home versus Tides, another match that we're going to tackle today. And here alongside to bring me the action is Nimsh, captain of Cloud9. Looking stellar in his blue jacket, or blue shirt, rather. Is this a picture from the recent Tavern Tales, or is that from a different event? That's the picture from the um, IEM Finals. I oh, I got a pizza. Yeah, got a pizza. Very nice. And well, where's your picture from? Like, you're from the Legendary Series, is it? Or is it BlizzCon? No, it is uh, from... It's from uh, the BlizzCon Regional Qualifiers. If you can remember, it's at when we did it in the studio, Stockholm. Yeah, Stockholm. Okay. You're looking sharp. Thank you. Although a lot of people complain about my tie, and rightfully so, it wasn't the best tie ever. So we will have Pimping Ho, as you said, versus Tides of Time. Pimping Ho, the man himself. What can you tell us about this guy? Well, he really likes shaman. Uh, for better or for worse, Ping Ping Ho is always a player that likes to bring Shaman. And Shaman's a class that struggled a lot. And it's not even just Shaman per se. It's the fact that Ping Ping Ho really loves bringing mid-range Shaman. It's just this weird fascination with uh, the class. And it's like as if the, the guy is determined to make it work no matter what. Um, in the meantime, Tides is bringing some interesting stuff. We see Priest. We see uh, Warrior, Warrior, we see uh, Handlock. Three classes which have kind of experimented with dragons. Handlock? It wouldn't surprise me to see Tides bring dragons in all three, although I'm still leaning towards Warrior being the Grim Patron Warrior. Yeah, I think like uh, looking at Tides of Time, uh, we will be looking at the Priest can be, again, the Resurrect Priest with Phelan, uh, a very interesting build that worked for him last week at uh, the deck battles. Then Warrior, I think, it can be either like the Dragon Warrior. Thais is one of the guys who really loves trying new decks, new ideas. So it might be um, his own, like instead of just going with Fibonacci Warrior or a simple, uh, similar deck to what Kara brought, maybe it's something really different. Uh, but I will be leaning to Green Patron as well. And a Warlock, hmm, I think Tides uh, has Zoo in really high regard. So if, if he's bringing, let's say, a Control Priest... Um, combo warrior, then I would say this is an aggro, so that his lineup is not easily countered, and he's bringing all three representations of types of decks. Sounds good. Um, now, Ping Ping Ho, if he brings Handlock, uh, I'm going to say Handlock, I'm going to say Midrange Shaman, I'll just say Fast Druid. Seems to be the most reasonable things across the board here. And I have to agree with that as well. Yeah. I, I think uh, the, the Handlock uh, class or the archetype specifically that Ping Ping Ho has played very well in the past. So it'd be, it'd be nice to see it again. Although I feel like Handlock could use a little bit of innovation. I know some people are trying out the Black Wing Corruptor there. Um, since you have Twilight Drakes, you can toss in a couple more dragons here and there. And then you can even play the Black Wing Technician for early game board control. You play Black Wing Technician... Azure, or not Azure Drake, Twilight Drake into Blackwing Corruptor. And it, it, you just basically control the state of the board really well. So now um, there is the big question of, con uh, of Conquest format. Is there any deck that will not be able to win versus the opposing lineup? Can you see any deck right here that will struggle versus the, the opposing lineup? Shaman mm -hmm. seems... Hmm... Maybe Shaman. Like you said, Shaman is actually not working that well. Um, Shaman versus Priest. If it's a Grim Patient Warrior, then yeah, I, I think Shaman's going to struggle a lot. Because the Priest is really naturally very good with the AoE clears. The yeah. Grim Patient Warrior can capitalize on the small attack minions. And then uh, Zoo is just a little bit too fast because it's like Lightning Storm or Bust. And Lightning Storm has to hit the, the right AoE. So that could be a weakness in his lineup. Uh, it could also be Druid as a weakness because I, I feel like Priest is pretty decent against Druid. And then, of course, Grim Patron is, is great against Druid. It's one of those. It's great versus Druid as well. Yeah, it's one of the few things where it flips the matchups on its head. Like, Patron Warrior is so funny because I feel like the things that normal Warrior is good against, you're not as strong. 
and then yeah. vice versa. The things that you're strong against as a control warrior, you're you're kind of weak against. Yeah, it's totally flipped matchup wise because right now it's it's so far from control. It's just a combo deck. It it you you mostly have to think about it like as a miracle rogue maybe. So it has similar matchups to miracle rogue, or maybe not really as well because it is different. But the players are ready. We can jump into the game. Tides versus Pimping Hell. Zoo versus Handlock. All right. So, start things off. Uh, Zoo versus Handlock. This is sort of how we predicted everything. Now, the question is, does Pimping Ho predict Tides to bring Zoo? And if so, he should keep that Hellfire uh, because it's really important to shut down that early game board. Now, Hellfire does have some room to backfire, but even more so now than ever because of Imp Gang Boss being able to leave behind a 1-1 one, one, and being at 4 health on top of the normal stuff like Nerubian Eggs. So, it managed to have got a little bit tougher for the Handlock player. They didn't Wait. get too many tools in Black Rock Mountain, right? Old Murkai, like, for the old Murkai, are you seeing this? Is this oh, a Mistraw? <laughs> it's a Murloc Zoo. Sick. Yeah, it's a Murloc Zoo. Whoa. After all those years of waiting, all those months... Years of waiting. <laughs> yeah, I actually waited for a year, I guess. Like, wh when was the last time we've seen uh, Murloc Zoo being competitive? Uh, geez, I, I don't Two know. Years ago? Um, no, maybe a year ago. It was about a year ago, right? It is, it's at least five years, Frodan. Five years, I'm telling you. Well, when you get older, time just flies by. So maybe five years for you, but it was actually just about a year ago when we were playing at Seat Story Cup 1, and it was the dominant deck. And of course, Trump's very famous moment where he built uh, a Hungry Crab into his... I forgot which deck it was. I want to say Mage, and then just completely overran uh, Artosis. Good times, man. Those were the days. Such a read, by the way, by Pimping Ho. Keeping the Hellfire to counter the Murloc Warlock. Oh, for sure. It's a really important thing to keep, just in case. And all of a sudden, because he wiped the board, now ties to start back from zero. Now, interestingly enough, did you know, Nimj, that in the Hellfire art, the Warlock is spitting fire onto Murlocs? Yeah, that's actually true. The Murlocs are burning. There's some burning fish inside. Um, but uh, talking about this matchup, like Tice will be able to use the the hero power here, and um, he actually got two really bad draws. He will he was not able to play anything that turn. And uh, this matchup, I think it's really favoring Handlock now with the um, with the anti kill bot. But you know, it's a gamble. Like every time you play this, there, there's always this question: Is there coin Hellfire? Because if there is no coin Hellfire. Murloc is just going to overrun the Handlock. But because there was that Hellfire, Tides is now really behind. Yeah, no kidding. He had to tap and pass. Like, nothing's going to be built anymore easily, especially because he has clunky, heavy cars that won't be impactful until the later stages of the game. Maybe he's yeah, like not exactly sure if he should be playing this Molten Giant here or the Twilight Drake. Something Molten Giant, okay. Yeah, multi giant's fine. Especially because you have the Tom Givers. Wow, this is so bad for Tides. Oh man, that Cold Light Seer naked on the board. Pinky Ho <laughs> has 11 damage. He can drop the Antique Heal Bot too here. You can only compare Tides to being fish out of water now. <laughs> A fish out of the tide. Yep. The anti kill bot puts, uh, puts Pingmi Ho effectively out of range. How does Tide deal that much damage in w one turn effectively? Because they can't deal with that Molten Giant. Is he's there like, a, a niche number like It's like, it's so hard to deal with the rest of this. He's got so much damage in hand. Oh, geez. He had a lot oh, of damage. Wow. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a lot of damage here. My if he would attack, no, he couldn't attack. Mm. Yeah, he's just dead. Game over. Well, Tides tried, but the Murloc Zoo is not successful this time around, and the Handlock escapes. But that wasn't the problem, right? 
It was the idea that maybe the Shaman and the Druid deck will struggle a lot in the series. We didn't think Hainlock would be that big of a problem. Oh, yeah, definitely. And I think it's all coming down to the Hellfire on, on free. Uh, because if there will be no Hellfire, just uh, let's say Ancient Watcher and uh, Sunfield Protector was not doing that much um, damage to the board. Uh, and Tides had an, uh, an amazing opening with Double Flame and Juggler and a uh, free to Murloc as well. So um, in this in this situation, Tides got um, stopped, but then the Murloc deck is still alive. Like he still needs to get one more win. So we're going to see more Murloc action here at the NVIDIA Prom Tournament. That's right. Uh, that sounds like you're pretty excited. So yeah, I, I'm looking forward to seeing if Ping Ping Ho is going to bring any innovations as well. I know, for example, with Shaman, he was really liking uh, Lava Shock, that new card that unlocks unloaded mo or overloaded mana crystals. He was experimenting with Earth Elementals and Fire Guard Destroyers last time I checked on him. I, I, don't, I don't really know if it fits nowadays, but I, I'm willing to say that if he's willing to innovate here uh yeah you know, i i want to at least see if he can you know bring that type of innovation to the shaman class which desperately needs it yeah yeah it will be amazing to see like a new shaman from ping ping ho who is a shaman uh let's say fanatic like he really wants to play shaman and i think there is still a lot of room for innovation especially after getting all the brm cards and uh and he's kind of like that we could see alex Straza, which is also not a staple card maybe he had uh, more dragons maybe just like Straza instead of Draxus. Uh, so, yeah, there, there will be a lot of fun stuff uh, coming still. So, um, do you think he's just taking Shaman now? Just uh, take Shaman, try to get one win? Or do you take Druid? Doesn't really matter, right? I, I don't think it matters too much. I think Druid has a better chance overall, but I, I don't know. At this stage, both seem... Both seem like comfort picks than, than you know logical picks for the strong meta game. So I think just whatever he's more comfortable with, just go ahead and fire it off. Because you know, like he's just seen Murlocs, so he will be like, okay, if Tides goes into Murlocs again, what has a better chance to win versus the deck? Is my Druid good enough to win versus Murlocs? I do have swipes and rafts, but maybe it's a Ton Druid. Ton Druid might be better versus Patron. Or is it not better? Yeah, it's a good I think point. it's better actually. The taunt druid, the, or you know, the really defensive one is interesting because we haven't seen it in a really long time be dominant in the meta game. We saw Kabi win the legendary series uh, week three, I believe, playing a taunt heavy druid. But outside of that, I can't really think of too many people who have really been able to employ it successfully. Have you? No, I think like it, it really uh, fell down because of rogues. Like there were too many rogues to play the Ton Druids and uh, and warriors as well. But now with Patron, it's possible that maybe the Ton Druid will come back um, to the meta game. So I will be excited to see the Ton Druid versus versus Murlocs. But I, I think the players are ready again. So Murloc deck versus the Shaman. All right. Well, it is mid-range shaman. We see those cards that we've come to expect from Ping Ping Ho, Neptalon, and and Alec here. Can the, the Murlocs build up their health count fast enough so that way it doesn't get shut down? Ping Ping Ho needs Lightning Storm badly, or maybe Power Mace or something else, just to control the state of the board. Yeah, and um, like even one Lightning Storm mostly versus Zodex is not enough. But if he gets Haunted Creeper, uh, if he gets minions to fight back, and then he gets Lightning Storm, that would be really tough for Tides. Uh, we've seen also Destroyer for, for Pimping Ho. But then Tides has a really good opening. Uh, there is no way to stop those cards. Um, wait, if there is a um, Coin Haunted Creeper... I'm just thinking if Cold Light Seer is able to buff everything on board on turn 3. Uh, no, probably. It's just going to be able to d destroy everything, but uh, Ping Ping Ho has some Flame ways Tongue. to answer it. Yeah. And a second Haunted Creeper. So if uh, if he goes for Haunted Creeper here, for a more stable board, that might be damaging for him. But then again, Tides has the Tide Hunter and Priestess as well. So he can just keep this here on turn four. Interesting. This this choice will 
really matter. He can also turn him up. Do you turn him up? Get the totem is so defensive, though. If he's unable to really gather himself after that totem, it's just he's going to struggle so much. Yeah, it is to drop the second creeper here. It makes a lot of sense. But the problem is, um, even if he's dropping these things, which are you know on paper great against um, you know early game aggression, that cold light seer is going to be such a big problem. On the other hand, with Quantic Creeper, oh, he decides not to attack into those minions because if he would attack into one of the the Murlocs, then um, Flamethrower Totem is giving him more value. Oh wow, there is the War Leader. Yeah. Hmm. So with Flame Tongue, he's not able to kill two Murlocs. Like, he can only kill one. Yeah, this is really problematic now. Might even consider Hexing. Oh, well, Hexing doesn't do that much, I think. Like, Hex will be amazing versus the War Leader. Uh, if he hexes the Tight Hunter. Or is that tight color? We we need to remind ourselves like what are the names of the Murlocs now. Well, it's it's, it's Billy and Mango. Tight color, yeah, Billy and Mango. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Mango, <laughs> the blue one. Th this is actually orange. not the easiest uh, call to make. You can go for a lot of damage. You can go for board control. Defender of Aryx gets two targets. Uh, so but. It looks like the Murloc Tidehunter is going down no matter what you do. maximize the damage on it, right? It's actually the the Lime. So we have Mango, we have Lime, we have Billy. But yeah, oh, I, I agree with this. You know all the names of the Murlocs. <laughs> yeah. Good for I you, man. Them. It's like a you know bad PBS television show. So kind of. the Teletubbies, it's like the Murlocs. And we have the Priestess, but Priestess is basically feeling blue, so no, spe no specific name. <laughs> well, even if the Priestess is sad, it still uh, gives people a blessing, so it's pretty important to get the health on it. Now, I think the health would have been much more desired on the uh, the War Leader as opposed to the Puddle Stomper, but now I was almost going to Hex. Oh, my. So he's going to just leave the Puddle Stomper as the only thing on the board remaining. And he will have... Well, he will have a good play next turn. But still, this is a, a good... Almost like a clear for Pimping Ho. But then it will not stop Tides. Even though his, uh, his mana curve for the next turn is weird. He needs to draw into something for free mana or maybe a one mana Murloc. Oh, Void, uh, Void Walker is actually great. Yeah, that's excellent. So now he can squeeze in uh, a tap and play these smaller minions. See whatever sticks and play Defender of Argus onto it. Yeah, he also Pretty got a good. Seer. So this is uh, only underlining the importance of uh, Lightning Storm. If there is no Lightning Storm, the Murlocs are just out of control. There's or... just too many small things that control the state of the board. Mortal Coil, wow. With the War Leader, he is going. Uh, well, like War Leader would be lethal, right? With plus six. This is uh, four, seven. Yeah, War Leader was lethal. Thing is, like, you just don't know. I, I feel like I can't predict Tides' deck. I was like, I did not expect the Mortal Coil to be in there, for example. It's great tech against things like Hunter uh, or against other Zoo decks as well, because there's so many small one health minions, Implosion and Imp King Boss making those 1 1 imps. But, um,. I, I I really don't know what to expect anymore from Tide's deck. He's playing pretty much uh, whatever he feels like is good against the current meta game and just trying to barrel down his opponent's door. I just love the return of the fish. It's, it's just great. I always loved the deck before um, in the original vanilla meta game, but um, I prefer those synergies that Murloc gi uh, Murlocs give than uh, the mech synergies. So I would prefer to play Murloc deck to to mech deck. Mm, well, what do you do here, man? Do you just shoot down the 3-3 three, three Puddle Stomper? But how much damage are you taking? 7, you're at 10 health. This is just bad news. You're just too slow. You have great cards. Absolutely smashing cards in your hand. Dr. Boom, Fire Guard Destroyer, Fire Elemental, Doom Hammer. Just too much damage. 
And Tides, yeah. of course, has uh, two in his hand. So say Ping Ping Home mysteriously decides to kill off two attacks of three, he might just die anyways. This is something that... This is something that Sir Christian told me at IM uh, that we mentioned. Uh, he said, like, I don't care about those legendary cards like Dr. Boom or Ragnaros. I just go face. And if they play them, sure, I will just go face and win still. But, you know, Sir Christian, obviously, we know the end of that story. Orange versus Amaz in the finals. Oh, well, Ping Ping Hill looks like he's done this game. There's absolutely no way for him to climb back here. So he can try to make a play, but looks like he's just out of time and out of luck. Tide should win this game pretty easily. And Leroy draw is just the icing on the cake here. So That's surprising, actually. Well done. But Leroy is I know, not right? Looking. But like I said, I, I, if I was playing against Kides, I couldn't put him on anything. It's just... Really difficult. You only know that he probably runs the Merc old eye or old Merc eye, excuse me, um, as an opportunity to finish the game just because of the Murloc synergies. That's true. Um, so what is Tides going to do now? Like maybe Tides thinks that uh, Pimpingo actually disconnected because he didn't make a play. So Tides might be waiting for Pimpingo. Uh, to I say think there something. might be a spectator client bug because. Um, Ping Ping Ho looked like he was hovering over the Fire Elemental, which means he might have played it. And then Tides probably has played his Leroy and then just won the game. Um, so it looks like we're having a little bit of technical issue here. But effectively, Tides was going to end the game no matter what Ping Ping Ho did, right? There's no way for him to survive. Yeah, yeah, like with Fire Elemental, uh, let's say this is 3 plus 4, uh, 7, Leroy, it's exactly, like, it's more than lethal. More than enough, he can still tap. He has power of whelming in stack. He has war leader. He's so many ways to. He has a dark bomb for crying out loud. It's like he's got the most insane damage possible. All right, so it seems like even though we see defeat, um, Tides had to just take that game. And uh, this will mean that Mer the Murlocs are out. And uh, there will be a win for both Warlocks. Okay, so the Warlock decks are out of the way. Uh, ignore the check mark there. Tide still has to play his Warrior and his Priest. The first time we'll see that. And if it's as crazy as Murlocs and Warlock, I mean, I would love to see Tides put Murlocs into Priest. How about that? <laughs> yeah, I would love to see that. Free Murloc decks? We've seen Valence Murloc Warrior. chosen on a more leader. It's just like, you can't kill it. Ever. Wow. And then you Hellfire? for four and it's still alive god i've i've been playing hellfire in the uh in my original murloc deck double hellfire because like murlocs can with those with the seers and the war leader they can actually get uh out of the hellfire range so you do hellfire opposing board and then you go for face and you can also use hellfire as a damage spell and you do have a lot of burst you do have the the soul fires and now well, now I would probably not play Hellfire in the Murloc deck because you do have the Dark Bomb, which is much better, and uh, you don't need to clear the board that much. But you do have the reach. Like, you try to deal um, some damage in the beginning with all the fish, and after you just burn out, you do have Dark Bombs, you do have uh, Soulfires and Leroy. Power of well <laughs> Soulfire for one mana. Well, Soulfire is kind of like three mana now because you usually want to tap with it. So crazy how one man difference has cycled out some things. You know, Gadgetan Auctioneer, Soulfire. The game was so different back then. Do you think Tice is playing Tori Sun in his Murloc deck to unnerf Soulfire for it to be useful again? <laughs> no, come on. There's 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 gotta be a better way than that. May yeah. play play uh Wait, well, you can't play Sorcerer's Apprentice in Warlock. Hmm. Remember the, the original Blood is that the only way to make cheap spells cheaper? Sources of Apprentice and Thorson? Um, I think so. Well, there is the um, the Summoner as well, but it's only for minions. Summoning Portal. Pine Sight, yes, there is Summoning Portal and Pine Sight summer, uh, Summoner. The 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, yeah, no, I was just wondering about place, reducing yeah. this, the, the cheapness of spell, or sorry, redu reducing the cost of spells. There's only Sorcerer's Apprentice and Thorson, right? 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, that's not true. There's like Kirin Tor Mage, I guess. And Preparation. Yeah, Preparation. And Innervate. You lied, Nymph. There's a lot of cards. <laughs> no, like Innervate is not reducing the cost. Innervate is giving you two mana crystals. Come on. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Touche. Looks like we're, uh, we, we're trying to get the players back uh, connected, guys. As you can tell, there was a little DC. We should be able to just give Tides the win there. It was 100% guaranteed after we saw the cards that no matter what Ping Ping Ho did, he would not have been able to stop his, um, Tides from killing him. And so was there anything specific that struck you on looking at the Shaman deck? It's, it's just to Yeah, I mean, there's nothing out of the ordinary with it. At least not yet. He seems maybe like he'd be secretive about it, though. Like, maybe hide the hi the uh, Earth Elemental or... I don't know. Uh, what else would he be really trying to put in his Shaman deck that'd be great against the metagame? Do you, do you have any opinions on Shaman? Um... Well, I, my, my opinion is that it's still bad and uh, somebody needs to, to, to put a new <laughs> list. I guess you said Earth Elemental, maybe. But then um, with Green Patron around, just uh, there's too much hard removal like executes flying around. Uh, All right, well, here we go. We have Druid versus Priest. This is a matchup where a lot d gets determined based off of... Um, well, it's quite honestly, it, it does depend on... Whether or not you're able to get an early board as the priest, and if you can, you can maintain it and snowball. And if you can't, then uh, Druid runs away with the game. That's certainly true. And uh, Tides had almost a BlizzCon opening hand. He just missed the coin. Imagine if you coined uh, the Blade Master on two and Circle. Yeah, it's just nuts. But he still has really powerful plays. This Sunfear Protector is also interesting. I guess. Ping Ping Ho died to a few too many hunters and just said, you know what, I'm tired of it. Maybe he's bringing Watchers. Ancient Watcher Druid. No way. Just bring back Ancient Watcher Druid like it's 2014, huh? Well, we've seen Murlocs, right? So um, I would not be surprised by Ancient Watcher Druid. Mm. But still, Ping Ping Ho having an amazing hand here. Just um, being able to to coin the shredder, but maybe Raph is actually better here to trade. Um, because if you if you leave the injured blade master on board, then Tides will just trade into your uh, shade and heal it. All right, well, expending some resources to take away the priest board. I'm not really sad about that at all if I'm the druid player. I think that's definitely what you need to be doing. Valence chosen on nothing. Sounds about right for the priest if you don't get that early start. And just like you said, Nim, that simple uh, sequence where his opponent was not able to coin out something has given the Druid such a large advantage going into this rest of the game. Yeah, it's looking so good for the Druid now with those pilots. And Sarah is not going to fix anything here. Just Holy Nova because he can, but... Well, because he needs to do something. He can't just pass. Yeah. I see. Yikes. Oh. And this Dragon Priest looks like it's going down. A cool attempt from Tides, but the way the draws have sequence and the Innervate Shade uh, is just a little bit too much. And it looks like uh, the, the fun deck from Tides drops to the refined and tried and true Druid deck from Ping Ping Ho. So it looks like the Druid deck has escaped. But the question remains, Nimsh, can Shaman win a single game? Yeah, that's still the question. And uh, Shaman is going to face that priest. If the priest gets a decent draw, then Shaman will be in trouble. And then the last deck, Warrior, well, we don't know which warrior is that. If that's a control warrior or maybe control dragon warrior, Tides might be in trouble. But if that's the green patron warrior, then Pimping Ho will be in a bad position. So for now, it's still a mystery. Who is going to win? Who is going to lose? Uh, well, unfortunately, one player has to lose. That's just how the nature is in this type of competition. Wait, Not aren't we all winners? Just yet, though. Aren't we all winners? Uh, no, man. In America, they're definitely not all winners. <laughs> I don't know, I, and I'm pretty sure that Tides is not going to be playing for uh, just to lose here right now the way it is. I think the one thing that Tides loves above everything else is showing off his skill. 
and yeah. creativity with deck building. And that's what definitely appeals to him about this game compared to some of the other games that he's plied, uh, played. Uh, Tides is a prolific gamer, loves playing other games like Dota 2, where he was a professional player, uh, and other stuff like that. Pimping Hill, in the meantime, uh, I think he said that you know, Hearthstone was his first real true competitive game. He hasn't really tried playing two other things, so this is his first real foray into it. He's going to load up the Shaman, and he immediately has Lightning Storm. Uh, what class is Tides playing? Is he playing the Priest, or is he playing I the Warrior? I think that was uh, a Priest, and he mulliganed his whole hand. I've seen Sylvanas, um, I've seen some big creatures, no class cards, and a full mulligan, I believe. Gotcha. So what is, gotcha. what is Ping Ping Ho looking for against the Priest? Oh, um, that's always hard, because if your opponent has Injured Blade Master and Circle, uh, you're going to wish you had Hex. <laughs> um, now, the Zombie Chow early on is so big... Just because you yeah, can control crazy. the board really effectively. There's nothing that comes out from Shaman that's more than two health until Pharaoh Spirits. Tithe has a Golden Priest. Does he now? Good for him. Yeah, how pious have you have you been to, to get that, uh, that Golden Priest? Yeah, I don't, I don't have many. I'm at like 270 or 300 or something, like really far away. I'd have to ladder every day for the next like year. With priest, because that's how slow my games go. I would have to. No, dude, I would. You know, I literally, I think uh, by the time it would take me to finish Golden Priest, I think Obama won't be my president anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's possible, definitely. Well, I think like when I finish Golden Priest, we're going to be past World War Four. World War Four. Wow, you're gonna skip yeah. the entire World War. Yeah, another well, I, mean, damn, priests, I, I actually would like to see how many priest wins you have on your main account, and I'm willing to bet it's it's. I'm almost willing to bet it's in the single digits, with like how low how little you play priest compared to how much you'd like to play aggro decks. Yeah, There's, it's it's possible. I think it will possible. be. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I am in the teens. All right, yeah, and the teens, teens is definitely what I was going to go for, but I, I was like, well, maybe I can even push it and say I'd be willing to say maybe even the, uh, the single digits. Single digit, yeah. No worries, man. Priest is always in a rough spot. It's one of those things where you have to really be dedicated to your craft. Great play here with the Alkanai Soul Priest, shutting down the Fire Guard Destroyer and taking uh, initiative. Also, there is Harrison Jones, and uh, we've seen Pimping Ho running the, the, the Doomhammer, so... That might be a very crucial card at some at some point. Yeah, yeah, you're really not anticipating your opponent having Harrison Jones and Priest that often. It's been cycled out, um, but you know, people like Kalento, you know, even before Kalento, Amaz put it in for a long time because it was such a big high impact changer against classes that yeah, you, know, you need that extra edge. For example, when Control Warrior was really big, you need Harrison Jones as as the Priest player to keep up with them. So Lightning Storm here, is Zombie Chow going to deal 5 points of damage? Uh, no, it should heal his opponent. If it dies at the same time... Um, if, it, if the Zombie Chow dies at the same time as the Akanai, then it, you, it always heals, I believe. The, the, the Prowl just triggers after everything is dead. All right. right. It will, specifically, I think the syntax is it checks to see if Akanai Soul Priest is alive, and if not, then it does damage. Or sorry, if not, then it heals. If it is, then you do damage. So for now, the game looks good for Tides uh, because if this is the Dragon deck, and we've seen it's the Dragon deck, it relies on end game. Like it wants to get to end game. So even though the quality of cards in his hand are worse than uh, Pimping House, I think the longer game will favor Tides. Even though there is that Neptulon. Hmm. Yeah, that Neptulon can be pretty clutch in terms of getting that card draw and. Really allowing you to refill. I'm looking at just like the AOE cards though, because that's what really pushes Priest over the edge. You're talking about Light Bomb. Um, there has to be another circle of healing that eventually comes in soon. And then you have uh, the Akanai circle combination or the Akanai um, can control the state of the board, and then you can use the circle to draw a bunch of cards. I'm now using the. Um... Um, the heal to draw cards, also important. Oh, there is Valence Chosen. Do you get a Battlefrog? 
Do you go for it? Hmm. There's nothing more satisfying than killing your opponent's card with something that gave you like a polymorph sheep or a hex frog. Yeah. The only thing that feels better than it right now for me, Nimsh, would be to hit the face with Fell Reaver. That is one of the most addicting things ever. Oh yeah. The the board shakes. But then um creating a free seven um cleric is also nice, especially after seeing one hex and, and uh maybe not expecting that much silence because now with the destroyers. Um I, I believe Shaman is still playing double air shock. Yeah, the Earthshocks are just too valuable. You don't really put silences in your decks, and you need them for Sylvanas. You need them for, you know, um, you need them for like the scenarios where you don't want your opponent to gain like a secret off a of mad scientist. So Earthshock generally is really, really powerful. Do you think Pimping Co is courageous enough to play Fire Elemental and kill Sylvanas and go for 32%? Oh, man. Oh, oh he's going I think for it. it's a very brave move, but it can oh, backfire. Thirty-three percent and Sylvana stacks. Oh, I don't have a good feeling. I don't have a good feeling about this. No! Oh! oh, oh man! As soon as he did that, and I was like, "Uh oh, no!" I, I instantly regret everything about this. Mistakes were made. Like whoops! There is a battle frog. Wow! Clever. I like it. So he heals the totem so he can draw a card. Nice. And it's funny too because he he sort of had the opportunity to leave it alone, like let the healing totem heal itself and then do one damage to the face. But I think he's saying that one damage is not as impactful nearly as having a card is. So oh yeah, that's the control the card. point right now. Mm -hmm. But how can Pimpinko escape um, Lightning Storm? Flame tongue, maybe double flame tongue. How much power is there on board? That's um, 18 points of damage. Wow. Mm, is, yeah, I guess it's time to try and hail Mary here. Lightning storm time. By the way, my math is terrible. It's actually 17. Oh, no worries, bro. I, I know what you mean, though. It's like he's he's got a lot, but it's not going to stay up forever here. Uh-oh, looks like Pimping Home might have disconnected. Lightning Storm seems like it's almost inevitable. You could Lightning Storm and then uh, use Flame Tongue Tome to clean up as a guaranteed. Or you can play Azure Drake. Can you? Because um, if you get, like, the, the Cleric is a 4-8. Yeah, but the cleric, you're not going to kill him no matter what. You just kind of have to embrace it. Oh, maybe. If he rolled high on the spell power totem and he can use the, uh, the flame, uh, not the flame tongue, the rock biter. Okay, no, he's not able to. There's the dragon king sorcerer. Hmm. Dragon king sorcerer. I want to really like it just because of... Oh, man, that's a big draw. Wow, what a huge draw. Getting yeah, it's also free holiday. damage because there is a spell damage on the on the Cleric. A lot of people forget about the, the damage there. Spell damage, I, I mean. Hmm. What do you do with the 4-1, though? You can just... Just kill it off. The Drake still is a big threat. To everything else that you're doing. And just go face... I I like it personally, just because the um, yeah you don't really have to build the board too much. Your opponent did play lightning storm, but he, more importantly, he's overloaded. Just focus on keeping your board resilient. Push for the lethal. Don't get too greedy, and just win. Oh yeah, and uh, Pippin Ho can't really do much. Like he got the feral spirit. It's something before that. It, it looked really bad. Um, so now with Feral Spirit, at least he has a chance to stop the Onslaught, but Ice is a full hand. Okay, Tice, uh... Tice just needs to kill one of the... Is there lethal here? Not yet, he needs something else. And now, it, now there is. <laughs> with circle right. healing of an eye. Oh man. Now he's got the lethal to push because he's got that circle of healing. So well done. And that's. Oh. 
Uh oh. Whoops. <laughs> the spell power. He forgot about the Valence Chosen. Yeah, because it was double Valence Chosen. Oh my god. Oops, we made that same mistake, just like in Sea Story Cup, Nim. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny, actually. Like, I remember it about one, so I knew, like, it's, uh, I assumed it's five damage. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Six damage AoE clear, that's so funny. Alright, well, Pink Pink Hill recognized that he couldn't win anyway, so he taps out. And that priest deck evens the series, leaving it just to the warrior. Warrior versus Mystery Shaman. Mystery warrior. What is that warrior from Tides of Time? Is this control? Is this green patron? This is the Dragon Warrior. Hey, I gotta think it's Grim Patron, man. Grim Patron just seems to be the flavor of the month at the moment. Yeah, and... it also fits with his lineup, being a combo deck. Oh, yeah, for sure. I love Grim Patron Warrior. Just loving dunking my opponents. I'm, I'm a very social person, Nim, so I, I feel very included whenever Grim Patron's talking onto the board. But against my opponents... It's an insta squelch and a mute the game whenever I play against Grim Patron Warrior. <laughs> yeah. But the deck is still like really fun to play. Um, just putting your opponent into those uncomfortable spots where he has to deal with those tools, those wars. Those are the party guys. Like you get some of them like get destroyed and they just call the friends. Right? Just want yeah, to have fun. I guess so. Beers and, uh, yeah. I guess so. The shaman, man. The shaman's been struggling. Struggling yeah. shamans. It's rough times it's... for 2015 Thrall, but maybe maybe people are on the verge of it. You know, I, I feel like Fireguard Destroyer, Destroyer should be a pretty decent card if you just look at the stat distribution. Isn't that like what Watermental is, but just without the effect, but way more powerful in terms of its scalability? It rarely hits these. So, it's also not that Shaman needed a 4-drop, but um, the player is yeah. already here, and we are going to see the Dragon Warrior. Game number 5, Tides versus Pimping Ho. I love it. It's great, man. The Volcanic Drake, I think, is such a sleeper OP card. If you can just manipulate a lot of the stuff that has a lot of AoE clear or like minions dying. Paladin is the obvious fit. I tried putting in Priest for a while because you have all kind of Soul Priest clear, but it felt a little bit too combo-y and inconsistent. And sometimes you have situational cards. Um, but the thing is, I feel like it doesn't fit in every class, right? Even though it's a neutral card, uh, Hunter has access to things dying easy with Unleash the Hounds. But if you look at a single target heavy deck, like, um, you know, for example, Let's take the fact that like Druid just a lot of spot removal and it's very rare that they get an AoE clear other than they can get you like, remind white. can you quickly remind our viewers what the volcanic Drake is doing? Oh yeah, sorry, it reduces its minion uh, mana cost whenever minions die. So it usually costs six, but if six minions die, it costs zero. So all right, um, I just want Dragon Rogue to be a thing, man. Blade Flurry Volcanic Drake, how sick is that? Yeah, that sounds amazing. But it's, but, it's, it's know, kind of like a genius combo. It's all within a vacuum. You can just hype, you can theory craft all you want. Maybe Volcanic is terrible, and I have no idea. By the way, there Wait, is a new card it, that we haven't seen too often. There is Revenge. There's Revenge, the new Warrior card too. That's interesting. Do you remember I what Revenge is doing? It does three damage if you're below a certain threshold, right? Yeah. How much health is it? Um. 12? Twelve. So it's it's good against Grim Patron Warrior. That's so funny. Yeah, it actually is. So it's a new oh. warrior deck for Tides of Time. And um unfortunately for Tides, I think it's putting him in a weird uh, spot versus Shaman. Where with Grim Patron he will have an amazing matchup. This might be more similar. To oh nice. Very good. Yeah, Raptor is, is great here. Because now he can coin execute after he uses the uh the black wing. So you can uh, hit this totem, black wing down the, the zero three, and then coin execute. Um, I think the. Oh, you can just shoot the Drake as well. Derp. Yeah, yeah, because the, if he doesn't do this, this then the sequence is uh, is weird. No, no, you're right, you're right, you're right. It was uh, one of those things where I was like, yeah, he could play, he could clear the board. <laughs> it's one of those things where you just kind of have tunnel vision. Yeah, but here is fine. Like uh, just leaving the flame to on board is uh, without any more minions. Uh, Shaman is not having a lot of charge minions, and uh, well, what's funny is that if you want to play Fire Elemental 
or something else, he has Big Game Hunter because he leaves up the uh, Flame Tongue. It buffs the damage, so he it's like you can't really play Fire Elemental because it's not value, plus your opponent can snipe it easily. Oh man, if he will actually get to 15 now with Revenge just clearing the board. Revenge can still be amazing next turn if the if the Shade actually stays. By the way, Shade! Pimpico is playing Shade on next Ramas. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen Shaman really try to run that, huh? Interesting. I'm really curious about this deck. Like, it, it is much different. Okay, well, Tides has to be anticipating this opponent's going to drop a file elemental next turn. Now, oh, he doesn't have enough mana, excuse me, the overload from the uh, Feral Spirits. Feral Spirit. But so you can uh, drop the Destroyer here. Yeah, Rock Brighter with the Fire Guard Destroyer. Do you just yeah. embrace the fact that it might get BGH'd and just drop it anyways? Next to the Flame Tongue Totem, or would you drop it next to the Shade X Ramus to keep it uh, low at, lower attack, so to speak? Mm, I think I would be fine with taking 5 damage to face and uh, keeping the Flame, flame Tongue. Because you do, uh, you will have uh, some BGH targets anyway, and you can deal with BGH easily with uh, Doomhammer. So I'm fine with like seeing BGH. Like even if you drop it right now, uh, if you drop the destroy uh, destroyer, you can. Uh, it, it can be in a BGH range anyway, if you if you're all high. Well, Doom. Doom Hammer it is, and Doom Hammer smacks the Dragon, or sorry, the Blackwing Corruptor. It's going to take me a couple of weeks, guys, to figure out everything out, exactly how it's supposed to be named. Um, wow, another Blackwing Corruptor comes in the hand, shuts down the Shade very effectively. And that's not exactly what he wanted to see. Uh, Tide still at just above the health, where Revenge becomes a pretty big AoE clear. Look at that, Fire Guard Destroyer comes down for 5 attack, and it's going to get buffed. It's gonna really tempt Tides to go for a uh, a big game hunter here, or maybe yeah, not, because now there's uh, the revenge. Free damage. Revenge. Oh man! And then you hit it. You take five damage, and then you place Senjin and, and armor up. Revenge of Tides. Tides of revenge. I think Tides of Revenge makes a little sense as a deck name. <laughs> yeah, sure. Look at that Flame Tongue Totem, how much damage it dealt to Tides already. Yeah, but Tides kind of welcomed it, right? Because of his... Uh, because of his health. Uh, like, as a resource for Revenge to be effective. Yeah. Yeah, So, he, he, he sort of plays his dance with his opponent now. He he wanted to find a compromise where he wouldn't die just like Earthshock Rockbiter. And PPO has half those cards. So a very good decision from Tides' end, just in case he would have died. He needs yeah, to be that's... very cautious not to overextend. He he's keeping his opponent he's keeping himself at twelve health too. That's like the big key. He wants to stay at twelve health and then keep armoring up. True. That Doom Hammer is so dangerous, especially seeing one uh rope biter in hand. And uh, even with like uh, Fire Elemental. That's uh, 13 points of damage. So what's the play now? Uh, do you play... Do you even go for the um, Rogue Biter this turn? Because you can Rogue Biter possibly, kill the 3-5, then Far Elemental the 5-2, and then going for face is awkward because if there's Alexstrasza, and you know that there's Dragon in Tide's hand because Corruptors did, did work. So instead of going for uh, face, you might kill the BGH as well. Yeah, it seems to be the best course of action. Just to eliminate threats one by one. And like you said, you know, the big game hunter's out of the way now. Yeah, a little bit of a painful exchange here, taking that big game hunter hit. He refuses to play the zombie child, Chromagus. That's interesting. Yeah, this deck is definitely very cool. And I think you can just execute in Chromagus this turn. Yeah, he's going to revenge first, though. 
Oh wait, it's not. Yeah. Right, so this Sylvanas, if it gets played, is another way to say, like, I don't care if you have Hex. Um, and if you do, if you do have Hex, then I can play a bigger minion like Chromagus or Ysera. If you don't have Hex, uh, you're my, I, I'm, I'm going to control the board really well because Sylvanas has high impact. True. Just playing those legendaries to bait out Hex. Uh, but Ping Ping Ho picked uh, Alak here, so this means that he is getting a lot of burst right there. If he picks up a second rock biter, that would be really devastating. Hmm. How much damage is it from Pimping Ho? Because uh, there are no taunts for for tides. Uh Pimping Ho will be able to attack the frog, then he is six plus six, that's twelve points of damage. You won't be able to play Alakir and a and a buff. So he has twelve. So for Tides, what do you do? What do you prioritize? How much damage do you expect? And uh, what do you need to actually get over, to take over the board next turn? Hmm, uh, I, I'm trying to think, but the bigger question is, can you deal with a card like Chromagus? I'm not sure. Well, for, for Pimping Ho, it's just uh, all about going for face now. Because there are no taunts, like the only frog, right? Uh, if he gets a rock biter, that's it. Uh, Fire Elemental is also really good. So Pimpy Ho can just attack the frog and uh, then deal 12 damage to face, leaving Titan 4. And he will have Alakir, he will have Pile of the Shredder, and he will have that um, Fire Elemental for next turn. Yep, good points. Mm, I guess he doesn't want to overextend, though. Man, Chromagus is so hard to remove. I'm really glad they made him a 6 8 7 8 8 Not that it would have mattered too much in this scenario. Alright, this play is also nice. Um, he was sure. able to deal 4 damage instead of 6. Uh, he's uh, keeping Alakir like, as a hidden. Harrison Jones. Jeez. <laughs> wow. And he's gonna well, draw another card, or not the two cards, rather. Double Shield Maiden? Yes, Double Shield Maiden. But he needs... Um, Doomsayer. Not a Doomsayer, yeah. Yeah, so that's it. Chromagus right. has some cool effects, but not going to be enough as uh, Tides will drop the series three to two or two to three. But cool stuff from Tides of Time: Dragon Warrior, Dragon Priest, Murloc Zoo. Yeah, uh, that, I, I love those decks. These tribes are fun to play. They look really fun to build and, and mess around with. I'm looking forward to see how things continue to develop as the weeks progress post Black Rock Mountain. Oh yeah, definitely. I think like the guys like like Tides and uh, other great deck builders, they're going to bring those different brews and um, trying stuff out. And you know, you, you will not be able to build um, a new archetype, a new deck if you don't try stuff out. Like a lot of people are just looking at the BRM and they say, "Hey, the set is not that great. Like those cards feel weak." But you have to look at the bigger picture. Like you have to look at all those cards and then just put them in one deck, and maybe you can actually come out of something that will be a new Grim, Grim Patron Warrior. Yeah, the Grim Patron Warrior. I'm looking forward to see more of that as well. I think people have just begun to scratch the surface on how to play it really well. It's a really difficult deck. Uh, that wraps up our second series, by the way, of the day. Hope you guys are enjoying us uh, a lot. Looks like we've gotten everything figure it out uh, for our next series. We got Sixo versus Dog, and I believe we can just kind of roll into that. We don't have to go to a break, Nimsh. Um, Who needs so breaks, man? 